Hey you guys, today is lesson 9 and 6 tenths. It's solving problems with fractions. Over the last several days, you have learned how to add and subtract fractions with different denominators. You have found out how to find equivalent fractions, how to find a common denominator, and all that's coming into play today. Just remember all the things that you've learned and you will have no problem doing this. It's a very simple concept to do because you guys have been rocking uh, fractions over the last several days. So let's take a look at our word problem. I have here that Kayla had 9 tenths gallon of paint. She painted the ceilings in her bedroom and bathroom. How much paint does she have left after painting the two ceilings? All right, so first things first, let's figure out what is it that the word problem wants me to be able to do? What is it that I have to figure out? Well, the first thing I have to figure out is um, how much paint did she use when she painted both the bedroom and the bathroom? Because she had to paint those two ceilings. So that's going to be really important. So what I have to do is I'm going to use this number and this number because this tells me how much paint she used for the bedroom and how much paint she used for the bathroom. Now in order to figure that out, what operation am I going to use? I'm going to add, right? Because I have to find out how much paint she used to paint both of the rooms, both of those ceilings. I'm going to take two-thirds plus one-fifth, and that's going to tell me how much paint was used. There's still one more thing I have to do. Do you know what it is? So the last thing I'm going to do is I have to figure out how much paint is left over after Kayla paints the bedroom and the bathroom ceiling. Remember, the word problem says I have nine-tenths, and it wants to know is how much paint does she have left after painting the two ceilings. Well, I know how much paint I'm going to have to use to paint both of them, but then I have to take that answer and subtract it from nine-tenths. We're going to put it all together for you right now. So let's start solving our problem. You can see that I added our word problem here off to the side, so you can go back and reference it whenever you need to. So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out is how much, um, how much paint did she use in the bedroom and the bathroom? So let's put that equation together. I am going to take two-thirds, whoops, two-thirds, plus, because remember, how much paint was used together? One-fifth. Okay, that is my equation. Now I have to find what is called the least common denominator, or LCD. In order to do that, I am going to find my multiples for each denominator. I'm going to go ahead and take my denominator from each number, and I'm going to list it. I have 3, and I have 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to start finding the multiples of each of these denominators. So let's list it. I have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. I can keep going, but I ran out of room. Now I'm going to do the 5s. And remember, I'm trying to find a number that both my denominators have in common that's the lowest. So let's do my multiples of 5. I have 5. 10, 15. Uh-oh, I'm going to stop there because I think I found one. I have these two that are the same, and that would be the lowest. So that's going to be my new denominator. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to add my denominator. I'm going to put it here and here because it's my denominator, my common one for both fractions. Now, I'm going to make these equivalent. To do so, I know that 5 times 3 equals 15. So times 3. Then I'm going to do the same thing to the top. 3 or 1 times 3 is 3. So 3 fifteenths is equivalent to 1 fifth. I'm going to do the same thing up on top with 3 times what equals 15. Well, I know that 3 times 5 equals 15. So 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 5 is 10. Okay, 
I have my equivalent fractions. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to add. I'm going to add 10 fifteenths plus 3 fifteenths. Remember the golden rule when it comes to adding or subtracting fractions with the same denominator, what we call like denominators. The denominator does not change when they're the same. So I'm going to add my denominator to the bottom, which is 15, because it doesn't change. Now I add my numerators, which are the top numbers. 10 plus 3 is 13. I have 13 fifteenths. Can I reduce this? Can I simplify it? No, I cannot. So my answer is 13 fifteenths. That's how much paint Kayla used total for both the bedroom and the bathroom. Now, I have to figure out the last part of my problem, which is how much paint does she have left? Let's build our equation for that. So what I have to do now is I have to subtract the amount of paint that Kayla used to paint both ceilings from the amount she started with. So if I look at my word problem, I know that Kayla started with 9 tenths. Remember, I'm subtracting how much she used from, from this, from how much she started with. So I know that she used 13 fifteenths. So I'm going to subtract from 13 fifteenths. Okay. Uh-oh. You guys notice something? I have a fraction. I'm solving a problem with unlike denominators. What does that mean? That means it's LCD time party time in math, as we call it. I'm going to take both of my denominators, my 10 and my 15, my two different denominators, and I am going to find my least common denominator by doing the multiples. Remember, I want to find a denominator that both will have in common that's the lowest. So let's start. 10, 20, 30, 40. I'm going to stop there because I ran out of room. Now let's do 15. We're going to do multiples of 15. And we keep going until we find a number that's the lowest that the 15 and the 10 have in common. So I'm going to start with 15. And then 15 plus 15 is 30. 30 plus 15 is 45. Let's stop there and let's take a look. Have we found a number that they both have in common? I sure did. It's right here. It's 30. So 30 is going to be my new denominator. So let's go ahead and let's add it or list it. We're not adding. We're subtracting this problem. Mr. Saracini, how could you? Sometimes even I forget. All right, so that's my new denominator, right? Now I do the same thing that I just did on the previous problem. 15 times what equals 30? 15 times 2. And then 13 times 2 is 26. Now, you may not be able to do some of this multiplying in your head. That's okay. Go ahead and write it down. Show your work. There's no shame in that. And now I do the same thing on this problem here. 10 times what equals 30? Well, I know that 10 times 3 equals 30. So then 9 times 3 is what? 27. I write my answer here. Okay, now we subtract. I subtract, because I have my equivalent fractions here, 27 thirtieths is equivalent to 9 tenths, and 26 thirtieths is equivalent to 13 fifteenths. So I subtract 27 thirtieths minus 26 thirtieths. Well, the first thing I know is that my denominators are the same, so my denominator here will remain the same. It's going to be 30, and then I subtract 20, my numerators, 27 minus 26, is 1. So my final answer is 1 30th. Do, can I reduce that? Nope. So how much paint does she have left? Kayla has 1 third gallon of paint left. We call that the Natalie, Natalie rule because she'll come up and tell me that I did the problem wrong. All right. So that's how you do it. You have to read the problem, find out what it is that you're being exactly being asked to do, and then 
Use what you've learned over the last several days to solve the problem. And that's all there is to it. I love me some fractions.